Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a repot and chat. I have quite a few plants here that I need to repot. I will not be showing you the roster. I'm just gonna take them out as I need to repot them, kind of tell you what's going on with them. But as we repot today, um, I'm going to do a different version of the Am I the A-hole series. So if you don't know what that is, it's where I go on Reddit, I find Am I the A-hole stories regarding plant things I discuss them with you tell you my opinion and um, yeah we just have a grand old time so it seems like you guys really like that series because anytime I ask like what you guys want me to get in the roster for the month that's always probably my number one most requested and then also of course like long <laughs> week ups which I do try and deliver but today I wanted to switch it up because is this light really warm or like in color temperature why do i look so tan let's try it there that seems that's too white is it is that the same color as my lights i think that's the color of my lights too bright Ooh. okay as you guys know i am currently nesting um i am due to give birth in just a few months now so i have been selling things like crazy around the house to prepare for archie and in doing that i've been having to sell a bunch of things on marketplace and if you guys watch every video you know that sprinkled in over the last like few months all I've been doing is just complaining non-stop about how annoying Facebook mar Marketplace is. I have so many gripes with selling things on Marketplace. The people just annoy me. I feel like people are just the worst versions of themselves on Marketplace for whatever reason. And I just, the etiquette, I just, there is no etiquette. I feel like there's no etiquette. And for every one good sale is like, 40 to 50 annoying interactions, conversations, um, ghosted messages, just it's been such a headache. So luckily I'm down to the last few things that I'm trying to offload and sell. And once I sell those things, I am honestly done on Marketplace for a while. But in doing this, I was like, it would be interesting to read other people's experiences on Marketplace. So instead of plant stories today, we are doing Facebook marketplace stories. Um, so I have quite a few for you today and we're just gonna go through each of them and hang out and chill out. And hopefully you guys have some plants that you need to repot that you can do it with me or if you have plant chores or chores around the house. Um, so yeah, let's just get going here. You know what, since my pond is on top, I'm just gonna start doing my pond plants first. The first guy up is this cutie patootie anthurium black, I almost said anthurium black velvet, anthurium crystal black. She is very, very cute, um, has been growing quite well on the living room shelf over the winter, but she's in the tiniest little pot and I can't even believe she's even given me new growth in such a small pot. So I'm going to be upsizing her into this today and hopefully she enjoys her new pants. Story number one, um, am I the a-hole for pushing back against a Facebook marketplace buyer for wanting to pick up an item they paid for earlier than agreed to? For wanting to pick up an item they paid for earlier than agreed to. I'm doing a cross country move this weekend. I'm arranging all the details, packing up my apartment, selling things on marketplace and hardcore cleaning all by myself while working full time 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. without a car. Movers are coming Saturday to pack a truck and then pack you boxes. I sold a washer dryer on Marketplace, clearly indicating it could not be picked up until this Saturday. A buyer insisted on paying in advance and agreed to come to the and agreed to the time frame. Today, she reached out saying they were no longer available this weekend and asked if they could come this week. I told her I'm working full time and didn't plan to have things ready, but she could come on Friday after 6 p.m. if she needed, which would be one day early, which would have been one day early. That wasn't good enough, so she asked about tomorrow. I replied out of stress saying, you know, this is a huge inconvenience to me, but I'll bend over backwards to do it and I'll spend my total of four hours after work today 
getting my apartment in shape to have things ready for you to get the washer dryer. But I want you to know this is all very sudden and unexpected and overwhelming and it's asking a lot of me. We went back and forth and in the end, she hired movers to come Saturday morning, but wasn't happy about the fact it wasn't aligned with what was easier for their very busy lives. Now it's awkward, but she's coming on the agreed upon date. Am I the a-hole for pushing back, given that she paid for it already? Should have I should I have redirected all my energy to make this possible without complaining? Oh boy. Okay, let me think about this one for a little bit while I get this guy out. Oh my gosh, my face is so itchy. I have really bad eczema right now. It's just I'm having such a bad flare-up around my nose and it's just like burning and I still think this is not bright enough. I feel like it's so dark in here for some reason. Okay, um, getting crystal black out. You guys can't see anything. Here. Oh, that's so much better. I feel like you guys couldn't even see the table or see anything I was working on. Okay, um, sorry, I was unpotting this. Let's see what's going on in here. Not as rudy as I thought it would. Not as rudy as I thought it would be. Um, I don't see any root breakage, so I guess it's just not a very rudy plant. A part of me kind of wants to move this to tree fern, but at the same time, I'm like, why bother? There's like no roots on this thing. This was a prop. So I wasn't expecting like a massive root system, but I was certainly expecting something larger than this. Okay then. So talking about this marketplace transaction, I'm going to put myself in the buyer's position. Um, or in the seller's position. If I was the one selling the washer dryer and I was very, very specific about the day that it needed to be picked up because trust me i've planned really last minute facebook marketplace pickups and things on move days like around moving day and it is extremely extremely stressful especially if like that person doesn't show up or comes later than planned or not responding it's just like what do i do you know so like i get i get why this person was really frustrated and stressed out about the buyer wanting to come at a different time, especially for something like a washer dryer. Like I'm sure there was a lot of prep work with having to like remove, like, what is it? Not pipes, hoses and stuff. And yeah, if you're working a full-time job, you don't have a car, so she's probably transiting. Um, to work to and from work like yeah, I'm sure her schedule is just crazy and so If I specifically say that damn, I don't have Lekka oh, I'm gonna have to use the, the Lekka that I don't like. Oh, no, I don't even remember what I was saying now um, But that was like three seconds ago. So um, yeah, I would be definitely annoyed if the person originally agreed like when she paid for it she agreed to come at the time that i designated and then later kind of like threw me a wrench and was like hey like it's actually easier for me to come earlier in the week if my schedule really wasn't flexible and i wasn't just being petty like if it truly was an inconvenience for me i probably would have done the same and just been like no sorry like i specifically stated that pickup had to be on this day this person agreed to do a day earlier if that helped even if it meant inconveniencing her and then you know the buyer still wasn't happy with that said it still wasn't early enough but at this point it's like now you're just changing all of the terms that you originally agreed to i mean like you saw in the listing that that's what she said you know needed to happen if you wanted to buy it I would for sure be annoyed but at the same time it's like I kind of get her not wanting to also lose the sale especially since it has to work out with timing in terms of the day of the move like what if you know I'm not willing to compromise a little bit and then she just backs out completely and is like I want a refund I'm not gonna get the washer dryer and then I'm back at square one so 
I kind of get why she agreed to like maybe doing it on the Friday, but then for this person to then, um, you know, give the seller attitude saying like she's not happy with the fact that, you know, it kind of disrupted their busy schedule or whatever, I'd be like, okay, so you're basically saying that your schedule is more important than mine or your time is more important than mine. I think it would be different if the buyer was the one um, changing all the terms that weren't in the listing. Like if the buyer specifically said like, oh, pickup has to be on Saturday and then suddenly was like, oh no, it has to be earlier. I think that would be way different. But in this case, the seller is trying to change terms that were already agreed upon and then giving that person attitude for not like, accommodating her so yeah i i personally think that the buyer was the a-hole in this situation would i potentially risk losing the sale and um ending up with a washer dryer that i have to transport like unexpectedly during move day um no i i wouldn't like cause a fight with that buyer but i think after all that's said and done once the washer dryer had been picked up, I probably would give them a piece of my mind after the fact because, you know, I don't want to risk being in a position where, again, I'm stuck with having to move an extra thing all because I had to say my piece. Reddit voted that the poster of this, so the seller of the washer dryer, was not the a-hole, and I have to agree. I, I don't think that she was the a-hole in this situation. Pretty big vessel for the size of this root system, but it was actually drying out quite fast in this little thing, so I'm feeling okay about it. I just don't know what cover pot it's gonna go into. I wish, because you guys know that with the smaller pots like this, it fits into those dollar store square vessels like perfectly. I wish they had one that was this size too for the larger pots, that would be so sweet. But unfortunately they don't. The next pond plant that I have, let's just do a really small one actually because I like to get the small ones out of the way and work my way up. Also, I am just very out of breath today and a little lightheaded. If you guys didn't know, um, I like kind of just threw up a little blurb, so I'm sure a ton of people missed it. If you guys have been wondering why I've been lightheaded, I've talked about it. Over the last few weeks, I've had these like fainting spells and just, yeah, I've been fainting over the last few, like last two months. And um, I got a heart test done, I got blood work done, and I am anemic, so I'm not surprised. That would explain so much, the tiredness, the lightheadedness, the uh, blacking out, just all of these things. I'm like, oh yeah, that tracks. So anyway, that's what it is. Um, anyway, the next one that I'm gonna do, and I don't even know why I'm explaining this, I'm just gonna transfer this corm into fluval. Me and, Alice were chatting and um, kind of saying how we're like both kind of on this alloca alocasia kick right now and I was telling her that I have been recently kind of wanting a alocasia sandiriana nobilis and I will throw in a photo of what it looks like next to me and I was like yeah like if you ever have a corm I would love one and she's like oh yeah I wish it would corm for me and kind of made it seem like there was nothing that she had at the moment. And then literally the next day, she was like, surprise. So she did say that this is this was one of the smaller corms and she's not sure if it's gonna do anything, but I have propagated corms much smaller than this. Also, I'm realizing that I'm scratching this with my fingernails and I always get so itchy. I don't know what it is. I get itchy after kind of like touching and peeling alocasia corms it must have some kind of substance on it that makes me itch but um i'm gonna go wash my hands <laughs> this one's gonna be quick so i'm not even gonna bother starting another marketplace story until this one's done but i'm going to put it in this little 
the pot and I'm gonna keep it in this in this vessel and then like I said I'm just using fluval stratum because that's just my corn propagation substrate of choice these days I just find that it's so much faster than any other substrate I've ever used there is a bit of gravel mixed into it because this came from my fish tank <laughs> so I'm just reusing it and I'm just gonna bury it deep enough so that only the little tip of the corm is sticking out and then I'll stick it in here and water it don't want to forget Fluval dries out so fast, so I definitely recommend using some kind of dome or like, um, yeah, like enclose it somehow. You guys might be able to hear my dishwasher going in the background, but I'm gonna keep about this much water in it. It's probably a little bit on the high side, but it's fine. And then I'm just gonna keep this thing sealed and hopefully it wakes up. Also, I have been washing my vessels, like my dirty vessels after repotting, like right after I'm done repotting and I'm not letting them pile up anymore. And it's been so nice. I mean, obviously it's not fun in the moment having to do it, but like, I just feel so much better. It's like a good habit I'm trying to get into. I just take it as my opportunity to catch up on like podcasts and stuff like that. And right now, the main podcast I'm listening to, if you care, Sword and Scale, True Crime, Sword and Scale Nightmare. It's kind of like the sister podcast of it. And please don't ask me why. Every time I talk about True Crime podcast, there's always someone that's like, you're so sick for, li like, why do you sickos let just stop, okay? Um, Solved Murders, True Crime Mysteries, listening to that one. And then for non, um, non, True Crime, I'm listening to The Useless Hotline with Andrew and Max Belegde. Um, he's like my favorite uh, TikTok creator. He's from the UK, he's a freaking riot. Another one is the is Luke and Sassy Scott podcast, another two brothers from Australia who I discovered on TikTok and they're just freaking funny too. So anyway, there's that. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Um, the next one I'm gonna do is my Mag Crystal from Amanda, and it's just the tiniest little thing. I used to resent it for giving me such tiny, tiny leaves, but now I'm like, this is just my little mini um, Anthurium, and it's just kind of cute. Like, it's really, really cute. And you know, I know what a Mag Crystal looks like. I would say this one is particularly cuter than a lot of Mag Crystals I've seen. Um, I feel like it could be a hybrid of something else. The venation is like a little bit red. I'm not, I'm just speculating here, but yeah, it's cute. I'm not really in a rush now to have it size up any bigger just because I've kind of enjoyed it being this little, little mini guy. But um, I am gonna repot because I, when I was doing some checks out on the shelf, I kind of noticed some roots that I don't love the color of. Um, mind you, sometimes just algae can present this color and trick you into thinking it's root rot when it's not, but I have a sneaky suspicion that this is root rot. Now I am going to move on to the second story before I get this repotted. I feel like I'm way too high now. Like, why can you see my full belly? Next one, am I the a-hole for giving a bad rating to a seller on Marketplace after he changed our meetup schedule the day of said meetup? What is this crunching sound? So this happened like a week ago and when I mentioned this to my friend, he said I should have just let it go. So here's what happened. I was scanning the marketplace on Facebook. I was scanning the, the marketplace. I was scanning marketplace on Facebook for a watch. I see this guy selling nice cheap watches and I decide that it could be an alternate watch I could use. So I PM the guy saying I'm interested um, on the watch and we plan a meetup. Our meetup was supposed to be at a mall. On the day of our meetup, I send him a text as a reminder of our meetup. He replies with an okay. So the time of our meetup approaches and I get ready to leave. I text him that I'm going there now, where he replies, okay, now I don't have a car, so I, com I will be commuting to the mall. 
I get there a few minutes later and he texts me asking if I could meet him up at the other side of the city. I reply with no because I'm not familiar with that part of the mall. Wait, I reply no because I'm not familiar with that part and the mall is where we agreed to meet up. He explains that somebody else also wants to buy the watch and it'd be easier for him since he is already there. I replied to him saying that if he won't go to our agreed meetup location, then I won't get the watch. He then reply, he then replies, thanks a lot. I was going to buy something for my kid after the sale. Now I'm losing money because of you. I go home and I was still mad about the whole thing. So I go to marketplace and I decide to rate this guy. I gave him a bad rating. Apparently he saw the notification because he messaged me telling me I'm an a-hole for doing that. He blocks me after and I don't get a chance to respond. I told my friend and he said that I could have just let it go since it wasn't worth the drama. Am I the a-hole here for giving him a bad rating? I guess I'm a bit confused as to why he even said like, oh, thanks a lot. Like I was going to buy something for my kid when he literally said like, I have someone else who wants to buy the watch that can meet me at a more convenient location. I don't get it. Did, did he not say that or or what? Um, here's my thought. If you guys agree on a location on Marketplace, I'm assuming that both parties are okay with that location. So if the person I'm meeting just last minute, like when we're supposed to be meeting is like, oh, actually, I can't meet you here and I want to meet you across the city instead, I'd be like, no, no, <laughs> straight up no, sorry. Like what the hell? Like if you didn't like that location in the beginning, why didn't you just say that? Like why didn't you say that from the beginning? Why did you even agree? This is what I mean is like when I say people are like the worst versions the worst versions of themselves on marketplace it's like people don't think logically you wouldn't treat a friend like this or a family member like this typically right like if you were meeting a friend like let's say you guys met by the way there is root rot on this thing let's say if you guys decided like oh hey like let's meet for lunch and then you agree on the time and place and then last minute your friend's like, oh, actually, can we meet at this restaurant instead? Like, it's more convenient for me when you're already there. You wouldn't do that to a friend. Like, you don't really hear of stuff like that happening. And I just feel like because you're dealing with strangers on Marketplace, they just use that as an excuse to, like, be a-holes and just do things that are not logical. And it pisses me off so bad. I don't know, it, like to me, it doesn't seem very hard to have just like a normal, smooth marketplace transaction. Like I don't get why it always has to be so complicated. Whoa, this thing is really close to me. <laughs> so yeah, I would 100% be annoyed if this person last minute was like, oh no, like I'd rather meet here. And then pressures me by saying, oh, there's somebody else that's about to get the watch if you don't come here. Don't threaten me, <laughs> don't threaten me. I don't want it that bad you know, and then after guilt me into not meeting them there when they said that they had someone else that they were willing to sell to, like you were so quick to replace me as a buyer, but now that I'm like, no, I don't want it anymore. Now all of a sudden it's not okay when it's done to you. This thing is like really not great. <laughs> I'm surprised it even gave me a new leaf, but it's a no wonder this plant is just not pushing out any large leaves. I feel like I always deal with root rot on this thing and I have had it in um, drainage before and it did the same thing. I don't know if Amanda, this is who I got it from, I don't know if Amanda ever has issues with this plant, but I don't know. I feel like she's been kind of difficult for me. Luckily there are like some good roots on it and I'll show you in just a second, but yeah. It's definitely things gone awry in here. I'm trying to just like feel what's squishy and what's not. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna cut. It does have a lot of like nice new roots, but this root system is not wonderful. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna do a conversion um, it was in soil before, but that's when I wasn't using tree fern in my Anthurium mix. 
and I've since then tried getting it to be happy in life in pawn and it just does not also seem to be working out. So since this plant isn't massive and I'm not really trying to like save any nice, beautiful, luscious leaves, I think I'm gonna do a um, pawn to soil conversion and I'm not even gonna bother removing whatever's on these roots. I'm just gonna plop it into the new vessel. So that's what we'll do, it just feels right. Sorry if you guys are annoyed by my sniffliness in this video. I've been dealing with pregnancy rhinitis and bloody noses and it's been awful. I also realize I haven't painted my nails really in like so long. It just seems like pointless because everything right now is growing so fast. My hair is growing so fast. My nails are growing so fast. So even if I painted them, it's like they'd be grown out in like less than a week. I'm cutting my nails twice a week right now. It's wild. So yeah, in this specific case, I don't feel bad for the seller at all. I think he switched things up way too last minute and then tried to use like guilt as a tactic. Whether it's true or not, if he was gonna buy something for his kid, don't use the whole, don't try and guilt me with that. It has nothing to do with me or what we had agreed upon previously especially with him saying that there was someone else that would meet him where he wanted to meet okay then sell it to him why are you still guilting me if you have another buyer reddit also agreed that the buyer well would have been buyer was not the a-hole also it's so strange being here on a sunday for one by myself because my husband rarely goes out but he's at um our friend's restaurant watching the Super Bowl and I could care less about football so I was like yeah you go so that I have an empty apartment to film but it's strange because like even on the weekends when you know I do want to film and I'd say like if he can just kind of hide out in the bedroom like I could still hear like the faint sounds of the TV in there or like sneezing or I could hear Pudge or something I mean Pudge is here but it's just eerily quiet. Also, I am stressing out. Wait, is this going up? This is going up shortly before I leave for California. I was like all gung-ho to leave for California. Actually, I'm not that gung-ho because I've been having um, really bad like panic and anxiety attacks lately. It was weird. My mental health just kind of tanked all of a sudden. I don't know if it's hormones, it could be, but I was gonna be in California for three weeks but I cut it down to two weeks just because I think I'm going to definitely have a few episodes being away from home, being away from Vince and Pudge for that long and just, I don't know, I have this weird, anytime I'm not at home, like if I'm at North Shore Tropicals or I'm at a friend's house or even grocery shopping, like if I'm just out, of the house for too long, I start to like get really panicky. Like I just feel like I'm supposed to be at home, but then I also have these like weird panic attacks at home too. So I don't know. I don't know what my brain wants, but anyway, yeah, I cut my, my trip down by a week just in case, you know, things aren't great mentally while I'm there, but I'm already stressing out about my plants because everything is drying out so fast right now. I have so many seedlings. It's kind of inconvenient to have to get on FaceTime with Vince and tell him exactly what to do, but obviously I will do that if I have to. But I'm like, I haven't been to California in so long that I forgot about the stress of leaving plants. But it's just what you gotta do, right? So, anywho, we are in soil now. Hopefully she has a better time in here. Hopefully we get some new root growth. Hopefully she takes to the transition well. Just a lot of fingers crossing, fingers, finger crossing and, and hopes. Hopes and dreams. All right, who is next? I said I was doing pond plants for first, right? I guess it doesn't really matter because now I have soil in front of me. Let's do this guy since it's small. So this is that um, Mag Verde AOS that I got from my friend Jose 
and it's in the smallest vessel. Its stem is completely sticking out. It's in tree fern fiber and it dries out so fast. And I just got a bunch of yellowing shortly after I brought it home because I didn't realize it was like completely dry in my tent. So let's handle this one because it's not happy at all. I'm going to remove these bottom leaves. Um, and let's move on to the next story. Am I the a-hole for selling the family heirloom of a stranger and dodging a request to share the profits? My mother, we'll call her S, uh, retired a couple years ago and has taken up flipping things on eBay or Depop as a hobby. She doesn't do this with the intent to hit it big. She just enjoys the hunt and running into cool pieces. Usually she finds these things in estate sales, thrift stores, etc. If she sees something she thinks I will like, she'll send it to me. A month or so ago, she found a beautiful space age style lamp at an estate sale in a rural part of the state she lives in. She paid 200 something dollars for it and sent a picture of it to me as she often does. She's an avid viewer of the Antiques Roadshow and had a hunch that it would be worth some money. The lamp fits the mid-century modern style of my apartment and she brought it to me when she visited my city the following week. Not a week later, a post appeared on the Facebook page my mom found the estate sale through from the family that hosted the estate sale. It was quite a sad post mentioning that the lamp was an heirloom and had been accidentally sold by the contractor they used to run the sale. They offered a cash reward for the return of the lamp. Naturally, after seeing this post, we did some research and found out that the lamp was worth several thousand dollars. Although I did love the lamp, I have a good amount of car debt that the sale would essentially clear out. After some deliberation, me and my mom decided to sell it and we split the profits in a way we found equitable. Soon after the sale, my mother was messaged on Facebook by someone accusing her of being the one who bought the lamp. My mom is relatively unique looking, so we figured they had scanned the Facebook group for someone matching her description. The message was kind of pleading, but we have not responded. Edit, the message the family sent went something like this in a nutshell. We believe it was you who bought the lamp. We would appreciate opening a conversation about returning the lamp for our discussed reward. We hope you have not decided to sell it, but if you already have, we do feel entitled to some of the money so we can hopefully buy it back. Am I the a-hole for keeping the lamp profits? Ooh, drama, drama, drama. Um, so I actually have some experience, not directly with what happened, but I have experience in this field because I used to own and run a vintage shop with my ex-boyfriend. And we would regularly scour garage sales, estate sales, antique shows, things like that. We'd travel everywhere to buy things and it was actually quite fun. The treasure hunting was so much fun going into people's garages, going into people's abandoned, like, you know, like, yeah, when you have an estate sale, like they'll have someone that had passed away and then they allow you to come in and just like buy a bunch of things in bulk. Um, it was so much fun. It really was. There were some moments where it was a little weird because I'm like, I'm literally rummaging through like a dead woman's stuff right now. And I actually still have something from that woman <laughs> with me. But anyway, um, so yeah, I have experience in this industry i guess flipping or buying and reselling vintage things but i think that if i were in this situation and someone had told me that i purchased by accident a family heirloom and i've been to many estate sales where it is run by these other parties i would give it back i would give it back whether or not this person or whatever was lying oh my god my dishwasher's so loud whether or not they were lying about it actually being a family heirloom or maybe they were just having seller's remorse saying like oh we probably sold it way too cheap you know because she they sold it for two hundred dollars when it's worth like a couple thousand or over a thousand or something like that i have very certain situations where i'm not gonna be petty and i'm not gonna choose to be um What's that word? Skeptical? Oh, I just broke a root. 
And I think this is one of those cases where I would just not overthink it too much and just take it at face value for what it is because if I'm wrong, if my skepticism is wrong, if my skepticism is wrong, and it really is a family heirloom and this is something that's been in their family for years and years and years and it does mean a lot to them, I would not feel good about selling that, especially I don't know, to me, a couple, like over a thousand, is it a thousand or a couple thousand? Cause that makes, not that it makes a huge difference, but kind of to some people worth several thousand dollars. Okay, that could really be make or break for, oops, make or break for a lot of people, you know, especially this person saying that they want to pay off car debt or whatever it is like i get that a couple thousand dollars is not nothing and could really change a lot of people's situations but i don't know i i just wouldn't feel good about knowing that this these people reached out to me saying that it was a family heirloom and then i just was like well screw it i'm gonna i'm gonna sell it instead i probably just accept the reward money and move on because I wouldn't want that on my conscience. Whether the family is entitled to any of the profits, that's a little bit up in the air. I personally don't think they are entitled to any of the money um, because they sold it, that transaction is done, they are no longer the owners of it, so why should they get any profits from whatever is done with it after? No matter what it's used for to buy it back or Whatever it may be, I don't think that it was right of them to be like, well, you need to give us some of the money then because it's just, it's not your money. But I still do think that the buyers of this, of the lamp were the a-holes. I feel like they should have just given it back because if it is a very sentimental family heirloom and now that it's, now that it's gone, I don't know, that's kind of a big thing, you know? I think I set aside this pot for that one. So, not a huge jump. Okay, fine. It's a pretty big jump. I would say this is a good root size. I could probably go a little bit bigger, but I'm feeling okay about it. I guess if it were me and it was like, like something that came from like my great grandma or even just my grandma, I would be really, really upset. Especially if it's maybe like, like let's say, you know, my family is the one that trusted me to be the one to um, to care for it, and then I, you know, sold it or whatever by accident. I would feel so terrible, and not just that. Like you just, yeah, you don't know what it means to to someone, and to me. And this is coming from a place where I'm not desperate for cash, as much as I'd love to make several thousand dollars from something that I bought for $200, yeah, that would be great. But to me, it's not, it's not worth it. I'd much rather just give it back. Oh my gosh, my nose will not stop running. It's so irritating. It is so very, very annoying. So yeah, that's my vote. And um, Reddit also voted that this person was the a-hole. Marketplace is just a weird, weird place, you guys. I wish there was a better way to sell. I've been seeing this ad for this new app called Carrot, which essentially is like a marketplace um, replacement. I don't know, I'm just like skeptical. I'm skeptical to try it because it's so new, you know? But I'm like, dude, anything has to be better than marketplace. Now, if I'm not making at least like $50, on something, I'm not selling it. I'm just donating it or I'm giving it away. It's like, it's not even worth the headache for me for anything less than 50 bucks. Even $50, I'm just like, oh God. But it adds up, you know, cause I've been selling things 50 here, 60 here. And like, it's few and far between the sales, but I've like accumulated more than thousand dollars or more than fifteen hundred dollars now in selling things we don't need anymore and so i am able to furnish 
Archie's nursery without having to tap into any new paycheck money or whatever. Like I'm able to just pay for everything with things that were already in the house, which feels great, but it's just, oh, it's been such a headache. Okay, so this is done, but I do need to make a tag for it because I will forget what this is, I will. Three plants down, so many more to go. Um, I'm just gonna mix this tree fern fiber in with my soil mix here, my Anthera mix. I'm really excited to repot one of these because it is in desperate need. Should I do that one next? Sure, not the easiest one, but I'll do it. Next one is my Mykins. This is not my rehab one. This is the one, my smaller one that is no longer very small, but she's looking really kind of bare up here. So I wanna do some tucking, some wrapping, um, there is some new growth up at the top, which is wonderful. I love to see it, but um, we got to do something about her because yeah, not only is she getting bald, but the substrate just dries out so fast that I can't keep up with it. And I really don't like letting my micans go dry because I feel like when you uh, deprive them of water too often, um, the leaves stop fully unfurling fully after a certain amount of time and it kind of always looks really sad so i want to avoid that because she's just looking really good right now before i do that let's move on to the next one i sold a sofa on marketplace for 150 pounds as i wanted to purchase the same one as a sofa bed the woman came and inspected it and as my neighbor was moving we even offered to deliver it at no charge two days later the sofa was in pristine condition and still being sold by the retailer. Everything went fine and she paid on delivery. My partner even carried it into her house for her. The next day I get a photo by my mother-in-law of the exact same sofa listed for free with just minor damage with the comment, wow, lucky that didn't come on Marketplace earlier. Two days later, the buyer messages me asking for a refund and for me to come collect as she's found the same sofa for free. I refuse. Um, as the sale was completed and I have no way of picking it up and had already ordered my replacement. She became very angry, started complaining about being scammed, her financial problems, and ended with threatening to report me to the police. I replied I wouldn't respond again to her, screenshotted the messages, and blocked her. I do feel guilty she missed out on a deal, but I wouldn't have bought the sofa bed if I hadn't sold the sofa for 150 and we even delivered it to her. My in-laws think I'm in the right, but my parents think I should have offered her a partial refund. Am I the a-hole? All right, let's get this thing out of here. So, for my first thought is I wouldn't feel guilty. Nobody forced her to buy, nobody forced her to buy the sofa. And I just don't like when people bring in like their problems like that, like, oh, but, you know, you should do this for me because of this, this, and that. Well, maybe you should have thought of that before you spent $150 on a sofa. Like that wasn't an issue two days ago, but all of a sudden it's an issue now because you see a free one. I'm sorry, but that's your, that's your problem. Sounds more like buyer's remorse to me. The entitlement of, oh, and you have to come pick it up. What the frick? <laughs> that is absolutely not happening. Not only do you want me to go out of my way to take back something that's already been paid for, done, it's out of my hands, you want me to come pick it up and now you're threatening? Yeah, good luck going to the police with that. What are you gonna say? Oh, I regret buying this couch and I wanna get this one for free and she won't take it back. What law did she break exactly? It's not scamming, you just, have buyer's remorse. I just don't understand it. Like, do these people do these kinds of things in normal situations that are on marketplace? It's just not reasonable. It's not rational to me. If this were my, if I were in this position, I would literally have laughed, like laughed hard and then blocked that person and said, go ahead and file a police report. Good luck with that. Okay. I need to focus because 
Repotting trailing plants is always kind of a nightmare. Um, like I like the way it's trailing now, but unfortunately I have to separate it if I want to be able to wrap some stems back into the pot. And I've said this time and time again, when you go to repot trailing plants, it always looks insane for a while. And to not fret because it'll come back. They'll eventually start acting or they'll eventually all kind of fall into place, but it just takes patience. The tough thing though, is that I think it's like multiple stems growing from one stem. So now I have to just untangle. So let me just do that really quick. But I cannot talk, talk and untangle. It's too stressful. I think I got one stem apart. This one doesn't have a massive root system, but she is separated. And then I think, I think all of these are attached if I'm not wrong. I hope I'm wrong though. Okay, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I love when I'm wrong. I love when sometimes, only sometimes. Okay, second stem is free let's go for a third you can do this sherm just breathe i've got this little baby one here with two stems i'm going to keep that separated here getting closer i do see some root breakage here but i'm not too worried about it because my gins can root like a hot dam so this is the one that was confusing me because it had like oh it only had two growth points do you guys remember what this looked like when I first got it? It was so small. And then I remember like when my other Mykins tanked, I was like, okay, well, at least I have this small one just as a backup. But then I kept looking at, at it like, you're so tiny and you're nothing like my other Mykins. But now they're like getting <laughs> close to the same size. Why did this fall off? Oh no. Guys, I didn't even... That's being so gentle. I think I'm gonna opt for my tree fern mix on this one to get some nice roots because that was, this is quite a bit of root breakage and there's more, there's more, even more in this, in this soil, like, oops. So the pot that I'm opting for is this one. So we're going from this guy to that, not a massive difference, but it's still something. And I am gonna do Lekka down at the bottom. I wish I had my preferred Lekka, but that's all I got. Going, oh, so going back to the story, hold on, which story? Talking about what happened, what just happened? Um, 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 oh, the couch, <laughs> the audacity. <laughs> Yeah, no, the seller of the couch is not in the wrong at all, especially if the seller knew. I mean, this has no bearing on the actual situation, but like she literally knew she had to get rid of this couch because she was getting a different one. So what, she's supposed to just have two couches now because you have buyer's remorse? I'm sorry, but if you have buyer's remorse, that's your, that's your fault. Like, unless something went horribly wrong, like you were sold something that wasn't as advertised and it's like a legitimate scam, then maybe, but like you were not scammed. You finding a cheaper one or a free one is not you being scammed. That's you wanting a better deal and the timing not working out for you. And now you making it someone else's problem. That's like, that's so wrong. I'm going to just get these back one by one and no matter how many times I repot trailing plants, I always like have to actively remind myself like there is a growing period, like growing pain period. It's going to look crazy at first, but you're going to be okay. I am going to remove the leaves down at the base because I'm going to bury stem 
and I just don't want these in the pot because they will end up just rotting. Um, where was that big one? Was it this one? Yeah. This one I want to get a little bit deeper. That's what she said. And yeah, don't feel bad for plucking off leaves at the base if you need to like bury more stem. The whole plant will be better for it anyway because as it naturally sheds, those are the ones that are going to go first anyhow. It's just kind of hard to get things in the way you want right away. Sometimes, like I feel like humans should be born with another hand. I feel like one isn't enough. And what's happening here? What is, what am I looking at? And why is there so much empty stem here? Hey. I don't have time for your antics. I think I might have to do some chopping because what am I looking at here? Oh, that's a lot of empty stem. Okay, so let's get the roots in first. Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm gonna remove this leaf. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a brand new growth point. Well, it's fine. And then I've got this one down here, which has so much empty stem so i'm going to try and bury this deeper i'm going to remove these top leaves so that i can bury this whole thing the worst is when you get everything where you want it to be and then you shift your hand and then everything falls out and then you have to start over again and then i'm going to try and get this one on the top we're going to need some serious mycorrhizae power on this if we want to get some roots fast. Also, my preferred growing medium for mykins is pollen, and so I'm kind of going against everything I'm used to with the mykins. But I do trust in this mix, so I think it's going to be fine, or I have to believe it's going to be fine. All right, so... We are mostly in. I have one more that needs to go in and it's a really tiny one. So I'm gonna try and get this one up at the top just as a filler. But there's this point right here that's really bare. Let me try and bury that. Okay. All right, Sherms, you can do this. This one's probably gonna be the most difficult repot out of all of the ones that I have left, so. Kind of glad to get this out of the way and I'm just gonna like kind of shake it between the roots hopefully it stays I just have to know when the right time to let it go is because if you let it go too early it can all fall out you can't see what's going on over here how's it looking on that side guys want to get any gaps I think I can let it go okay and I want to try and get the soil level as high as possible because I have exposed nodes up here that can act as um, an opportunity to get some more roots on it and then also having more weight on it to hold down the stems that are kind of like wrapped up at the top Repotting trailing plants, if you're not just like plucking it and putting it into a new, a new vessel, it's kind of like Hoya's. It's an art form for sure. But I think where people go wrong is they, they're like, help, like I messed up my plant. But you have to give it, give it like a solid month or even more for everything to kind of face back where it's supposed to be. It eventually figures itself out, but I have to agree that the process in waiting is not fun at all. Okay, let me clean this desk off and then we're gonna clean up these stems a little bit. Oh, my bird. Okay. Also, are you okay? Sorry. Um, so going back to the story, I just remembered a little tidbit where her in-laws said that she should offer a partial refund for what? She sold a perfectly 
pristine couch, she said. She delivered it. Her husband loaded it into the house for them for free. What, what warrants a partial refund? I don't get it. it it's not like she sold a faulty couch. It's just this person wanted something cheaper and like didn't get it. And it doesn't make sense because if that person who posted the free one, if it went up at the same time, the original buyer never would have reached out to this person in general. But at the time, this was the best deal that she could find. So she took it and nobody forced her to take it. So why should she get any kind of partial refund? For what? You, you don't deserve any money back. You agreed to that price. So isn't that done? Aren't we like, shouldn't we no ties anymore? Like I'm done with you. If this person, if I was in this situation and this person was trying to put me in this kind of situation, I'd be like, yeah, literally, please send the cops to my house. Please, I'd love to tell them what happened and waste all of our time. That would be great. Okay, it doesn't look as bad as repots normally are, like after. Um, but I do think, I kind of feel like I could afford to chop though, because this stem is unusually long and I kind of all want them to be at the same-ish length. So, and I want to activate more auxiliary buds, so I'm going to chop, I'm going to chop here, and then there was a thing here, there was like an empty, an empty node, so I think I'll chop even higher, and no, I am not propagating these, I'm not selling them because Locally, they're selling Mikan's pots for like $3. It's not worth it. And don't you dare guilt me into trying to keep them. These things grow like weeds. It will be going in the trash. Okay. Done. And I'm feeling very, very, very good about it. Yes, I did have root breakage. But I think at the same time, she's just going to be much happier in this soil mix specifically and a bigger pot. I just love the micans, you guys. The micans is one of those plants, like every time I look at it, it just reminds me of like the good old days, you know, when I first got into these imported aeroids and like just unknown or uncommon aeroids. Oh, I just realized this needs to be tucked in. There's so much empty stem. What do I do? I need a little clip thing. You could use a bobby pin, but they end up rusting. Um, I'll just put more soil on top. Yeah, it just reminds me of like, takes me back to when I first, yeah, got into unknown or uncommon aeroids and was just so in awe of the different textures and the different sheens, growth patterns, because you know, like up until that point, I was really just, cause yeah, I started plant care and plant collecting way back when, 2012 or 2011, but it was like all the things that I had grown up with, rubber plants, different kind of ficus, monsteras, pothos. So to see a plant like this, even though it's been around in the house plant market, it just wasn't very common. To see something like this with like such a dark velvet shiny leaf, it was just so different than any of the trailing philodendron I ever had, trailing pothos, and I just was like mind blown. I was like, this is why I'm on this earth. <laughs> to, to cohabitate, to cohabitate? To live and nurture these plants. Like this is, this is bliss, this is pure joy. And um, every time I see a micans, it just brings me back. And it's just such a great feeling. I can remember back then when everything was so brand new, just being excited to like wake up and go see my plants and go see new leaves. Like I know it might seem silly to a lot of people who don't understand plants and you know, they're like, yeah, it grows new leaves. Like what's the big deal? But to us, it's like, it's like everything. You know, we're just a bunch of weirdos.
hanging out together. Okay, she's done. That was definitely the most labor intensive and one that required all of my brain power, but I think it went well. Let's move on to the next story now that we've established that the seller was not the a-hole and Reddit also agreed that the seller was not an a-hole. Am I the a-hole for canceling a meetup last minute and selling to another buyer paying more? I don't even need to read it. I don't even need to read it. Yes, you're the a-hole. Um, I'm going to move soon and I'm in the process of selling whatever I can to make packing easier. Among one of those things is a washing machine I listed for $250. Bought it new at $800, but there are plenty of newer models out now. After a week of no interested buyers, I dropped the price down to $200 or best offer. One woman offered $150 and after two days of no further offers, I agreed. She said she needed to wait until next week until her husband was back in town with the truck in order to pick it up, which was supposed to be today. Yesterday, I got another person message me saying he'll buy it for 200 and can pick it up the same day. Initially, I said no because I already, because I already agreed to sell it to someone and don't want to flake on them. He laughed, calling me dumb for not understanding that bidding is normal on the secondhand market. He then offered 220 if I changed my mind in the next 20, 10 minutes. I texted the first buyer and explained that I had another person offer 220, but since I already agreed with her first, if she wants to offer 200, I'll still sell it to her. I didn't receive a reply in time, so I said yes and sold it to the second person. He came and picked it up and our deal went without any issues. A few hours later, the lady called me and said, yes, she'll go up to 200, but I said it's already gone. She started screaming at me how I broke the agreement and that um, she couldn't answer in time because she was at work. Am I the a-hole? Oh man, you got thoughts on this one. Going back to what I said, I just think, okay, what the, the second buyer said about, oh, you're dumb because bro, like selling on the second hand market, like you can accept bids. Yes, that's true. Like you know, it, on marketplace, whatever the listing price is, like you can, anyone can change what the price is for whatever reason they want. But I feel like just doing the decent thing and like having good etiquette is like, list it for what you want, negotiate for what you want, nobody is pressuring you, but don't make it into this like private bidding war because it's sketchy, it's weird. How do I know that this other buyer even exists and now you're trying to like take more money from me? And again, as a buyer, you're not, you're not um, obligated to pay a price you don't want, but it just seems shady. Like I just don't like the idea of people changing prices on Facebook, especially when a like a deal has already been made in my opinion i don't think a transaction is done or a transaction is agreed upon until like you set the time and maybe even put a deposit down or pay for it in advance but again with etiquette as much as i'd like to make more money as well if i already agree to a price i'm okay with then I'm gonna stick to that person and I'm gonna stick to that price and I'm not gonna entertain any other um, offers. I just think it's I just think it's yucky and gross. I don't like it. I just don't like it because it's happened to me before and I was so icked out by it and I just was like, no, screw you, I'm not even buying it. Anyway, the next plant I'm doing is my RA5 swamp that's extremely unhappy out in ambient conditions, but I'm not going to stick her back into a tent or whatever. She's just going to have to figure it out for the rest of winter because I'm not doing it anymore. I don't actually see a ton of roots on the side, on the sides, but there's a lot of stems sticking out and I just want to get it into something bigger. So that is what I will do. Ugh. Ow. So off the bat, I already don't like the whole changing price thing because I personally am against it. Um, and I would just never do it to someone even if I could make more money. It's just not, I just don't think it's fair. I just don't think it's right. It's not against any rules, but I, I just personally don't like when it's done to me. So I wouldn't do it to anybody else. Second thought is if somebody legitimately called me dumb 
straight up said, you're dumb for not knowing how the secondhand market works. That's an instant block for me. First off, don't be, don't be freaking rude, okay? Like, yes, you can entertain higher offers or whatever, but it doesn't mean I have to. Even if that's how this, you know, marketplace works, don't tell me how to sell what I'm selling. Like, let me do whatever I want to do. Don't tell me what to do. And don't call me dumb. <laughs> First off, don't call, don't be freaking rude. I would have just immediately blocked this person, even if he was offering $200 or $300 more. Sorry, but maybe it's like my pride, but I would have not entertained him at all. If you want to call me dumb, you can go find another washer. My washer's too good for you. So that guy's also an a-hole. I don't like the whole idea of the seller agreeing to a lower price. Like, yeah, it's already a lower price than what was originally advertised, but you agreed to it and nobody forced your hand. This person didn't guilt you into agreeing to that price. You agreed to it because you were not having any other bites on it and you felt like that was gonna be the best deal for you at the time. And then for you to go back and be like, well, I'll still sell it to you, but only if you can match my original price. That's icky to me too. Like, what the heck? And for that other person to agree and be like, okay, fine, you know? I don't know. To me, it's just not worth it. I'd just be like, no, you can sell it to someone else. Like, I don't need, I don't need it from you. I don't know, the whole thing just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Anywho, the roots actually look really great on it, but it's all at the bottom. <laughs> There's like no roots in the midsection. It could be chopped, but I'm not chopping it. I just want this thing to kind of get its bearings and figure itself out. So the pot that I'm going for is this one. Just going one size up pretty much. And root system size to pot size, I would say is pretty good. It's I could probably even go bigger, but I really don't want to. I've been trying to conserve because I need it for this, the rest of this, for this one plant I need to repot, and I don't even think that's gonna be enough. So in this case, I feel like the seller was definitely the a-hole. It just seems very opportunistic, it seems, really shady. I don't like the whole taking offers on it and then making the other person pay more after a price had already been agreed upon. It just, the whole thing is just like yucky to me. Cause I've been in that situation before where I was selling something and then um, someone offered me more when I said it was pending. And I think this person was offering me like, 30 or $40 more. And yeah, sure, it would have been nice, but at the end of the day, like I already made a deal with someone and there was already a time that was set for them to come get it. No, they hadn't paid, there was no deposit or anything, but me, for me, it's just all about etiquette. I think the only, and I don't know if I have any stories pertaining to what I'm about to talk about, but I think the only time it gets really, really fuzzy in terms of etiquette is like, you know, if you have multiple people that ask if it's available, I would say the ratio for me, for every 20 people that ask if it's available, you have one serious buyer. So, and in the times where you reply, yes, it's available, even if you reply right away, so many times they just ignore you and they just leave you on red. And, and it's like, whether they hit that button on accident or they just are keeping their options open, it's like, as a seller, I don't feel obligated to the first person that asks me if it's available. I'm not gonna wait to like hear back from them or see if they really want it. Like if you're not in communication with me, then you clearly don't want it that bad because when I really want something on Marketplace, I'm like a hound, like I will make sure that I get it and I'm gonna reply back in a reasonable amount of time. And so for the amount of times that I've been ghosted after getting these like, is this available message? Or even if they ask a question about it or ask like, oh, where are you located? A lot of the times these people will not message you back. They'll just leave it at that. So for me, I'm going to respond to everybody who messages me 
and then I will only hold it when I feel like I have a serious buyer. And you can tell when it's a serious buyer when they're like, okay, this is the time I want to come get it. Like, I can send an e-transfer or like I'll pay cash. You know what I mean? Like you can just tell when someone is really serious about buying about buying something and when they're kind of just like browsing the market. And I've been in a situation before where I was selling something. This girl asked if it was available. I said yes. I could see that she had read my message and I didn't hear back from her for, I don't know, like eight or nine hours. In that time frame, somebody else messaged about it, was really serious and wanted to buy it and wanted to come the next day. Didn't put out down a deposit or anything, but was like telling me exactly when she was gonna come. She's like, I'm gonna pay cash. I'm gonna come by after work tomorrow. This is how long it's gonna take me to get from my work to your house. And so I marked it as pending. And then the girl who messaged me first um, messages me back maybe like 12, or maybe like 10 or 11 hours later and was like, oh, why is it like, oh, so it's pending now. And I was like, yeah, someone's coming to get it tomorrow. And then she was like, well, I messaged first. I was like, yeah, you messaged first, but I was 11 hours younger when you messaged. <laughs> like, that's kind of a long time. I don't know if, I don't know if you're serious after 11 hours go by and I'm, I don't hear from you. So in my opinion, I don't think you're obligated at all to sell to the first person that messages. I think that you can enter, you can entertain a bunch of messages and find the one that you know is serious and is in constant communication with you. Otherwise, I don't think you have any obligation to anyone. That's just my, that's just my thought. I don't know if it makes me the a-hole, but that is um, just based on my experience with Marketplace. When I was first on Marketplace, I would have sold it to the first person that messaged and I would have followed up with them if they didn't message back and been like, hey, does this mean you're interested or not? So can I move on? But after you're doing it for so long, so many times, you're like, screw it. I know the pattern of people on Marketplace and I'm not even gonna bother. That's just my thought. I'm gonna have to make a new tag for this because it's coming off. Um, maybe I'll just do that now. Whoa. My toxic trait is that when Vince isn't home, it doesn't matter if he's like going out with the guys or he's going to dinner or he's whatever. Whenever he's out in general and I know he's gonna eat dinner somewhere else and I'm by myself, I feel like I'm entitled to a dinner, like an order out dinner. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm like, well, he's eating out somewhere. And like, if it's just gonna be me, then yeah, like I should eat out too. That's, and that's not even me just like being pregnant. I always think that. So as I've been filming in the back of my head, I'm thinking about what I wanna eat, like what food I wanna order, even though I'm like, I need to not order so much food this month because I'm trying to save money. And I have plenty of dinner here. We just went grocery shopping. And actually, I bought some sweet ja sweet Japanese potatoes and they're so good. And I was gonna have that for dinner. But I, it's still in my brain, I'm like, no, I should be able to eat something out. Like I should, I should order out. And something I've been craving is um, ramen. But since I can't have the soft boiled egg right now it's like almost not worth it for me because that's like i love ramen obviously for the noodles and the broth but some of my favorite things about ramen is the egg and the bamboo shoots i can have bamboo shoots but it's like what's ramen without the egg you know so anyway i haven't gotten ramen since i've been pregnant because it just yeah it seems like a waste of money to get ramen and pay ramen prices and not be able to get an egg all right, we're trucking along here, trucking along. So actually, I think I'm done with all of my soil plants. The rest are going into pond. I was thinking about converting one of these plants to soil, but I think I'm, I think I'm not. I'm gonna do the smallest one first. We're gonna ease, we're gonna ease into this, ease into it. 
This one probably is so surprised it's getting its moment because this has been in the world's tiniest pot since I acquired it back in like 2020 or 2021. It has been in this little teeny tiny thing just trucking along. I don't even know if this is the normal growth pattern for this plant, but this is what it looks like in my house. And I just felt like it's time. So she's gonna be moving into this bad boy. It's not that much bigger, but it's the best I could do right now. And hopefully she appreciates it because this thing dries out faster, faster than fast. I don't, I try and say that all the time, that phrase, I'm like, it dries out faster than, and I never know what to say. I never have anything. Like, is there an actual phrase I'm supposed to be saying? Usually it's like, faster than you can say, blah, 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 but I can never think of anything on the fly fast enough. I'm not that, I'm not that clever. Okay, um, what were we talking about? Marketplace, oh yeah, the selling, the, um, the, uh, 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 canceling the meetup and selling it to another buyer who's paying more. Yeah, I think that this person's the a-hole because I'm just not down for that. And Facebook also um, said this person was the a-hole too, so I agree. Okay, next one. Am I the a-hole for this Facebook marketplace exchange? I need to stop leaning on this thing because it has a crackling sound. I, 25 female, am autistic, so I don't always have the greatest social awareness, but I am struggling to figure out where I went wrong here. Hopefully you all can help me figure out if I'm the a-hole or not. Today I found a desk for free on Facebook. The listing said that the desk was in good condition, except that it wobbled a bit because the leg lengths weren't even. It looked like a really nice desk otherwise, and I figured I could fix the legs, so I messaged the poster and picked it up in the afternoon. When I was setting the desk up, I noticed it was missing two pieces of hardware that affected the functionality of the hinged lid. It was a discontinued IKEA desk and I found a manual online. I decided to message the guy and ask if he happened to have the two pieces. Here's the email verbatim. Hi, thanks again for the desk and thank you for helping me load it into my car. I just set it up in my space and it's exactly what I needed. While I was setting it up, I noticed that some of the pieces for the lid were missing. I'm sure I can find replacement parts for it, but I was just wondering if you happen to have them. It seems like one of those things I would find in my junk drawer and wonder what the heck is this? If you have them, I would be happy to take them. If not, I'll see if I can order it instead. The response I got back was, this is the problem with giving things away for free. People always find something to complain about. If that desk wasn't so wobbly, I'd tell you to bring it back for being ungrateful. I didn't think I had been ungrateful, so I don't know why he responded like that. Um, edit, I forgot to add that aside from just not wanting to return it, the desk is too heavy for me to carry by myself. I had to disassemble it to get it upstairs into my apartment, which is how I found the fix for the wobbly leg issue. I really don't want to disassemble and reassemble it just to give it back, especially because I really wasn't trying to be rude when I asked about the hardware. Am I the a-hole? Okay, let's get this thing out of here. Where, why do I keep losing my pokey stick for the love? Oh my god. I don't think that the person who got the desk was being an a-hole like even in the slightest. Like reading that message verbatim, that's probably exactly how I would have worded my message to the seller. Um, like I'm one of those people who, <laughs> cause you know, I have just like an anxious personality. I'm like one of those people where if you reply back to me with like a one word answer or you put a period at the end or you don't have an emoji when you're texting me um, or an exclamation mark, I'll feel like you're mad or you're annoyed with me. If your type, if like your texting bubble is on there for too long, I feel like you're getting mad at me for something or like you wanna say something to me but you're like editing it and trying to make it not sound so bad. Like that's where my mind goes. So when I'm messaging people on Marketplace or just messaging people in general, I'm always so like, <laughs> you know, giddy, happy, emojis, exclamation marks. If you have ever received a message from me on Instagram or something, I think you'll know that that's like my communication style. And I just don't want people to think that I'm like giving them attitude or whatever. I want it to be very clear that I'm having a great time. <laughs> you know, I don't want there to be any confusion because I think that's one thing about 
this new age of like online and texting and stuff it's like your intentions or the way you actually feel can come across wrong a lot of the times and there's a lot of miscommunication that way so anyway the way this person reply or the initial email to the seller even if it was free i'm calling him a seller that's how i would have worded it just very chipper and happy and like oh don't worry if you don't have it like i'm not saying i want to give it back like i'll get another replacement part i just want to know if you have it because then it'll save me having to you know go buy the part i can just come back and go grab it from you and then for that person to reply like oh yeah like you're ungrateful like blah 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 like this is what's wrong with selling or like giving things away like what the hell when did i ever say that like i was upset or disappointed with what you gave me i was literally just asking if you had parts and if not it was not a big deal like i don't think that she worded it in a way where it was like she was pressuring him to offer some kind of something you know so i don't know i think that's so weird that this the seller the grumpy old man kind of sounds like he's a grumpy old man i have two in here i don't know if i need both do you think? Do you think? Like, I feel like this is good. No, but it, look, it looks kind of bare now. Like, I feel like this kind of completes the look. You know what I mean? She's a weird, she's a weird plant. This is a really weird plant. Like, is this supposed to be climbing? Or is this supposed to be like ground cover? Like, what am I, what am I looking at exactly? And like, how do I get more balls to form? Oh no, this thing is breaking. Okay, I need to stop. I need to stop. Stop it. I feel like the guy who gave away the desk is being like unreasonably um, rude and like defensive for no freaking reason at all. Because I didn't think, you know, she said like she has autism and so she's not always socially aware, but... I didn't see anything wrong with her message or her even inquiring about it. I feel like the guy was just like a grumpy Lou or is having a bad day and I was taking it out on her. The poor thing. I just think it's crazy how like people are so, they are so willing to ruin someone else's day over like the stupidest things. I can be very, I would say, like, sassy and, like, sometimes I say things I shouldn't, at least publicly, about my opinions and stuff like that. Like, I'm very opinionated and I'm un unapologetic and that's why a lot of people don't like me. But I also feel like I'm at least aware when I'm projecting onto others or when I'm maybe saying something that could legitimately ruin someone else's day. It's just... I don't know. I just think it's just unnecessary and weird and rude. And I just don't get it. Like how people can just be so cruel to people for literally nothing. Like the stupidest, stupidest freaking things. It's one thing that definitely surprised me about being, no, I'm not even gonna say surprised because you know, I've been on the internet long enough to know there's just like nasty, miserable people out there but I guess I get surprised every day by how petty people can be and the, the weird, really weird things that people get upset about. I cannot believe this one's getting a new repot. It's one of those plants that have just like flown under the radar. Like it never even occurred to me to repot it because it's just been living in the same pot and substrate for so long. It also, it, almost felt like it was just a permanent fixture. Like I've had this thing for so long. Hopefully that little guy does not break off because this thing came a little loose when I was flailing it everywhere. So now it's resting on the, the pawn. So hopefully she's okay, but oh my gosh, she's got a new pot. This is crazy. This is, this is wild. She's gonna go back and show off to all her friends and be like, look at my new pants. After what, three years, three, four years. Year done, year done.
you're done. Okay, second to last plant is a big one. Actually, the next two are big. That's what she said. <sighs> All right, we can do this. We can do this. Shermanator. Let's sher activate Shermanator. Oh, God, that's heavy. <laughs> next one is my big Billy... Actually, this is my small Billy at TA. My big one is has been repotted recently. So this one is just in desperate need because when it's dry, it was just a matter of time before this thing was gonna come crashing down to the floor because it's getting so front heavy and the pot is so tiny that like one, one wrong move and she's, she's gonna come crashing to the floor. Um, I'm not looking forward to this because it's so sticky. But, plant people do what they have to do, right? It's just, just what has to be done. Before that, let's move on to the next story. I think you guys know. Um, I don't think that this person's the a-hole and um, Reddit also voted her not the a-hole. I'm moving states in five days. We've been packing and selling stuff that no longer fits Oh, this person said, do not post this elsewhere. Does that mean I can't talk about it on, on YouTube? What are the chances this person would actually find this? You know what? I don't need bad karma, so whatever. You posted it on a public forum and then you're telling people not to put whatever. Let's just... Let's just go to a different one. Oh God, Archie is kicking the crap out of me. Oh my, ow. Um, am I the a-hole for backing out of a Facebook marketplace sale? Um, I posted, oh my gosh. Our group chat is going crazy. I need to put on do not disturb. I posted our kitchen table and chairs on Facebook Marketplace yesterday for $300. After being bombarded by scammers all day yesterday, I finally made plans to sell the table to someone early this morning. It was clear English was not their first language, but they said they would rent a truck and pick it up before noon. I tried to pin them down for a more exact time since I don't want to sit around and wait all Sunday morning for someone who may or may not show up, but they kept saying before noon. About an hour and a half later, my husband and I decided that we don't want to sell the table after all for several reasons and I let the person know as soon as possible. I told her that very, apo uh, very apologetically that if they had not already rented the truck, we would cancel the sale. She said she did rent the truck. I asked for proof. She didn't address this request but instead started to verbally abuse me saying I was crazy and had no respect. I again said that if they had rented the truck already, I would still sell it to them, but she was already going off. I assume the language barrier had a lot to do with the exchange, but my thinking is that if you've already rented a truck at 7.30 a.m., why can't you get the table until noon? In the end, she was mean and I told her to F off. She returned the sentiment and I blocked her. Am I the a-hole? I need time to process this one. Okay, let's just get this out of here. Oh my gosh, it's so tight, that's what she said. So tight. Tight and dry, that's what she said. Okay, I guess I have a few thoughts. Um, I think it's crappy that the buyer or okay I think it's crappy that the seller decided last minute that she doesn't want to sell the table because I feel like if you listed something on marketplace like you took the time like can you at least just be sure that you want to sell it instead of wasting people's time with communicating and figuring out a rental truck situation and pick up like it's already annoying enough you know, trying to lock down a sale and try and make pickup times work. I don't know why it's so incredibly hard with some people. Some transactions, it's like smooth sailing from the start to finish. Other transactions, it's like pulling teeth. So 
yeah i i already find it annoying that they change their mind but they're well within their rights to change their mind it's their table they can do whatever they want they're not obligated to sell the moment it hits marketplace they can literally do whatever the hell they want but i'm gonna say it's annoying second i don't think that like so this person you know rented a truck i don't feel like it was so much to to ask from you know the other person saying like can i at least just have proof that you rented the truck so that i don't feel like you know because i i've obviously changed my mind and i want to keep it but she was obviously being courty enough courtes courtesy enough she was obviously being courteous enough to be like okay if you rented the truck already then i'll sell it to you but can you just at least prove to me that you sold it i don't think that anyone is obligated to show proof but at the same time this is like a private transaction and that's just what she's requesting i don't i don't feel like it's it's asking that much honestly on the other hand though this person saying well you rented the truck at 7 30 why couldn't you come right away not really any of your business you know you agreed on the time at noon why does it really matter like you don't know where this person lives what if they're coming from far away what if they they have somewhere else to be like they're picking something else up because if i'm renting a truck if i'm spending the time to rent a truck shoot if i'm trying to furnish my apartment i'm going to try and pick up everything on the same day so that i can get my money's worth for this truck instead of having to rent a truck multiple times so there's so many reasons why this person maybe couldn't come right in the morning time and again it's not relevant to the situation they agreed on a time that it doesn't make a difference at all i think the seller was just being petty or finding finding reasons i guess to justify their end of it but i also think that like the buyer just kind of lashed out for no reason i don't get why they couldn't just provide proof that the truck was rented and if it wasn't they're probably just getting mad because they're annoyed that she wants to pull the sale but again it's within her rights and she was saying that if the truck was rented she's still gonna sell it to them because yeah she felt bad that they would have had to rent a truck for no reason i personally don't feel like the seller was being an a-hole specifically i think both of them were they kind of did things where it was like annoying seller why are you changing your mind last minute um and buyer why can't you just show proof it's really not that hard it's not like she's asking you to show proof of like your citizenship and send you your social security number like it's really not a huge deal like literally just like send a picture of the rental agreement or send a picture of the truck oh this was supposed to okay. this this leka was supposed to be for my other plant but i don't think that's gonna happen now Ah, oh, freaking! You know what? Hold on. Let's think about this. Do I really not have any Leka anywhere else? I have a little bit that hasn't been sterilized yet, but it's like not even close to being enough. Like the Billy probably doesn't even need a reserve, to be honest. Like it's so resilient. Okay, we're not. No. We're not gonna use it on one of my easiest plants ever. But now I'm hoping I have enough pawn. I mean, not that I wouldn't have enough pawn. I just don't want to have to prepare more pawn. Oh my god, I probably am. <laughs> so annoying. It's just so hard to do things like this when you're pregnant. Like everything just becomes such a task. Even just dropping something on the floor and picking it up. I'm like, no. <sighs> there goes my whole day. And I don't really want to convert this to soil because it already has so many pawn roots but i think i'm gonna need all of this pawn for the last plant i'm doing i really 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 don't want to have to prepare more pawn i mean all that consists of is just it's just the dust that gets everywhere you know because i have to strain or i have to sift out the perlite and sift out the the pawn because it's dusty what would you do in this specific situation 
Um, yeah, because this is so, this is like a whole pond root system. Okay, you guys, you know what? You take an ad break. I'm going to go do this and stop being a negative Nancy. Burb, beer back. Was that as bad as I thought it was going to be? Yes, it was, if you're wondering. <laughs> I hate mixing substrates. Unless it's soil, that's very fun. I don't know why it's so fun, but I hate making my pond mix. I just hate it. It's such a chore. And I'm allowed to hate things, okay? I'm allowed to complain. All right, now I definitely have enough to work with, but just not enough table space. Was this for that? Okay. okay, okay. This is gonna be a lot of pawn. I just want, I just, I'll bear, okay. Charmin, just, just knock it off, okay? Um, did I read you guys a story? I'm trying to use my brain to remember. It's like a competition with myself. Oh yeah. Um the 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 the, the truck situation. Yeah, I think I think both of them just did really weird things. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, I think they were both kind of a-holes in this situation. I think more so maybe the seller as the a-hole, but um, Reddit voted this person the a-hole. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think the whole situation was kind of weird and annoying. Um, I should put it deeper because I want to get some of these aerial roots that are sticking out since I'm not using a pole. I might as well use them um, in the substrate, but I'd have to bury it quite deep and try and point them down or else they're gonna grow upward. But at the same time, I don't wanna go too deep because I want the roots to have somewhere to go. So that feels good to me. It's just, I'm gonna be using so much pawn. Oh, I broke this root. Okay chopping that off because we don't want broken roots in the vessel. That's one thing with trying to redirect aerial roots if you don't do it early enough before they get super, super stiff and hard. It makes it harder to kind of get them where you want to go. Oh my gosh, stop spilling. Oh my gosh. It's because this thing is so skinny. It's so narrow, the, the, the scooper. I should use a different scooper, but I'm just being stubborn now. Things are happening. We're getting, getting somewhere back here. It's just a lot of pawn. I don't like this. I do like it, but not for this specific situation. It's too narrow. Something I thought about recently was, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had a second tortum, and a lot of you guys know that's like my favorite plant. I had a second one as sort of a backup, and because I was growing my original tortum in here, and I wanted a second one to enjoy out in the living room, and I don't know, I just, with the downsizing, prepping for Archie, I kind of quite easily got rid of the second one. I don't know if it's because my original one is just so big and growing so well that it was like, it's not a huge deal if I don't have a backup. But I was, yeah, I found it quite easy to get rid of it and sell it. But um, in the rounds of plants that I'm purging, I was like, okay, well I have two billies. They're about the same size. The other one that I have is slightly larger than this one. It would be a little bit too much to combine them because they both have so many leaves that it would just be like insane. But I can't get myself to get rid of any of them. I'm like, I was so quick to get rid of my tortum, which is like my favorite plant, but then I'm having a hard time getting rid of my billy. I'm like, what? What's happening here? So not all of these roots are buried, but I really don't want to have to like go all the way to the top of this vessel that's kind of crazy like it's gonna be happy no matter what it's a billy 
So she is in and has so much more pollen and it's so heavy. Where did I put you? OMG. One more plant, you guys. One more plant and one more story here. And I saved what I thought was the best one for last because it is plant related. If you watched my last week of, you probably knew this was coming, but my novelty Ace of Spades um, has needed a repot for a while. I've already built a collar for it, as you can see up here because it was outgrowing it. And um, yeah, it's really root bound in here. So it's just time to get her out and I'm going to be repotting it into this one. I think it could have gone into something bigger, but this is the biggest I have. So she's gonna have to just make do. And that's why I really needed Lekka because I wanna do Lekka down here. Although I feel like it's gonna come out of the bottom of this thing and this is cracked. I could do landscape fabric, but I'm too lazy to go grab it. So, <laughs> okay. Last story, everyone. Let's make this one count. Am I the a-hole? Sorry, it's kind of small, so I'm gonna try and read this. Um, I feel like an old person, like my dad, when he reads something, he's like this. <laughs> Sorry, dad. Um, am I the a-hole for not giving a rubber tree back to the lady on Facebook Marketplace who sold it to me? I work at a college. I'm updating my office to be more comfortable for myself and for when students come in. I love houseplants and I love that my office looks like a mini jungle with pothos, monstera, aloe, snake plants, and a ruby rubber tree in it. I've, just, I've received many compliments. On Facebook, an older woman, maybe late 60s, early 70s, was selling her amazing burgundy rubber tree for $75. This tree is a six foot beauty and the lady said it's been growing for 20 plus years. It's well maintained and would fit perfectly in the corner of my office. So I go over and buy it from her. I can tell the lady is very sentimental over this rubber tree. She was extremely picky about the type of transportation I was using to move the tree. She almost didn't sell it to me because I told her I was using an open bed truck to pick it up. She wanted me to be very careful with it. She was telling me stories about it, etc. Anyway, she has been a difficult seller compared to other Facebook Marketplace people, so when I finally drove away with the tree, I was, glad, I was glad to be done with it. I moved the tree into my office and it looks amazing. I'm happy with the purchase. The next day, the lady messages me on Facebook asking me how the tree is doing. I try and be polite and tell her it's doing great in my office and looks beautiful. I once sold an expensive juice press at a discount on Facebook and the lady who bought it from me went home and excitedly sent a juicing picture to me to show me how much she loved it. Haha, <laughs> so I'm not necessarily opposed to messages from the seller slash buyer. Well, this lady said she had a change of heart and would kindly like to get the tree back since she's had it for so long and she doesn't know what she was thinking. I tell her I'm sorry, but it's already been sold to me and I'm keeping it. She messages me back frustrated saying that she made a mistake and that if I don't give it back, she would report me to Facebook. I told her I will not be giving it back to her as I bought it freely and fairly, but that she can rest assured that I will take care of the plant. I also told her I would be blocking her, so I did. I felt kind of bad, but it was a weird situation. The next day, I'm working in my office when I get a knock on the door and I turn thinking it's a student, but no, it's the Facebook lady. I'm floored. I told her showing up to my workplace is inappropriate. She apologized to me and told me she saw where I worked on my profile and then went to the front desk to inquire where my office was so she could talk to me in person. She saw my plant in the corner and had a handful of cash and tried to give it to me saying, here's your money, please just let me take my plant and I'll be on my way. I told her that this was crazy and could be considered stalking and she needs to get out of my office before I call campus security. She kept arguing with me and wouldn't leave, so I called campus security to remove her. When security came, she started crying and told me I was heartless and left without the guard having to escort her off campus. After I talked to the guard, he said to me, she's an old lady. If it was me, I would have just given her the plant back. I kind of felt bad like I did something wrong, but at the same time trying to demand something she sold to me, especially by coming to my office was crazy. Am I the a-hole? Should I have just given the plant back? I told you it was a good one. Okay, let me get this out of here first. I need to focus so I don't um, break anything I'm not supposed to. 
this old collar was hanging on by by a thread. Okay. I have a feeling these roots are gonna be good. Like I'm pretty sure the ugliness of this new leaf is just due to growing out there in the winter. I'm really just forcing them to live in really terrible conditions. It's kind of sad if you think about it, but it's just what has to be done. Oops, I broke a big fat juicy root. I forgot to check the bottom to see if there was stuff coming out. Oops. Personally, just not, you know, picking into the nitty gritty of the details. I would have, I would have given the plant back. It's a weird, it's a weird freaking situation. And maybe I feel this way because she's like an old lady and maybe, yeah, just like isn't in her right mind. And it's just kind of sad to think that, you know, she's had this plant for so long and now she has such bad remorse about selling it. Like if it was a young person, I'd be like, look, you freaking sold it. It's too late, it's too bad, whatever. I think it would be different if they were like, this was my late mother's plant or something. Like, I feel like there are situations where you don't have to be so petty, you know, or you don't have to be so prideful. And I feel like this is one of those situations I just feel for the old lady. Again, I'm not saying it's not weird. And technically she really shouldn't be asking for something back after the sale has been made because now she has officially transferred ownership to this other person and it's done like that's it's her plant now that's just how it goes but i just can't help but feel really bad for this woman um you know especially if it's a plant that you have sentimental attachment to i sort of felt the same way with selling my big euphorbia trigona not that i tried to get the plant back but i i think it's one of those plants where i'll think about it a lot later down the line and just think like damn that's too bad or like you know, I miss that plant a lot. I I think if I were in this situation, I would have just not fought it. Oh crap, there's a new leaf coming out. This thing is so fast. I would, yeah, I would have not fought it and I would have just given it back to her because I'm just thinking about this old lady like literally being like a detective and figuring out where she lives and then like Googling how to get there and like actually going there with the cash. Like, I don't know, it's just so sad. I just have a thing with old people, they need to be protected. And I'm just imagining if this was my grandma and she was like so sad and regretful that she sold a plant, um, you know, like people make mistakes and it was obvious she was like really protective over it from the beginning. So like, I wouldn't be even surprised if this happened to me and she was like, I want the plant back. I probably would have given it back. It's not to me, it's not worth it having to think about like how sad or upset she would be for like the rest of her life. Again, I think it's just, I'm biased because I think about my own grandma and I just have a soft spot for old people. But if this was someone that was my age, I'd be like, ah, you're sh out of luck. But yeah, I do think it's, I would be so weirded out if someone on Facebook Marketplace like went onto my profile and figured out where I worked and then showed up, oh my God, that would be scary. Except she's an old woman, so it's like, how threatened can you really feel, you know? I feel like in this situation, um, she should have just given it back. You can find another plant to put in your office and you already have so many plants in your office and yes, it's annoying because you took the time to go get it and like, you know, transport it and bring it to work. Like, obviously it's not, it's, a huge inconvenience for you and it's very strange because you did nothing wrong really but i think just like looking at the overall picture big picture here just seems like the right thing to do is just give it back it's just sad it's a sad situation I just can't, i just can't stop imagining thinking if it were my grandma i'd be like you better give my grandma her damn plant back um so there are some uh like old roots doesn't look like it's like active root rot. It looks very old, like from when um, I first acquired this plant. I could afford to chop it, but I'm not going to just because a new leaf is coming out, has quite the stem on it. It goes until about right here. 
I do need to give a cutting of this to Alice. I'm just, well, I guess it's not like an inflow. Like I've chopped plants while new leaves were coming out. What should I do? I could probably afford to take a small cutting of it, but I mean, there are plenty of roots in here. I could probably, okay. <laughs> I'm having a dilemma. I'm just gonna take a small, I'll take a small cutting. It's hard to see where any auxiliary buds are. Let's go. Hmm. I'm gonna cut here and just hope that there's an auxiliary bud. Hold on, don't cut that off. I'm sure there's one. Oh my, that actually took a good chunk of its root system. Oh no, it's okay. There's definitely a bud on here. Yeah, I can see like two, two of them. Okay, so this actually reminds me, okay, so in this situation, I think the seller, oh, I think the person who posted this is the a-hole. I would have just given the plant back, given all the details of the situation. She's an old woman, probably not in her right mind, just not thinking clearly. It's a very sad situation. It's weird, it's freaking weird, but I, I would have just given the plant back. So anyway, let's first focus and get the LECA in here. I know it's all gonna spill out because they're kind of small. I really wish I could have done a bigger LECA layer down at the bottom, but I really, uh, you know what? Let's just use this one from my old repot. It's not like you'll see it anyway. Okay, now it's kind of at the level that I would want it about right here. So, sorry, there's like so much going on on this table. This, I wanted to tell you guys a story um, that kind of reminds me of this situation. And I think I've already told this story, but it would have been kind of a long time ago. So sorry if you're re-listening to it. But I um, bought, and it's so funny. Oh no, it wasn't, a rub it wasn't a rubber tree. It was a Monstera. I bought two Monsteras from this woman on Facebook Marketplace. She was very nice in the beginning. Uh, you know, she was like talking to me about how she's been growing these monsteras for over three three decades and she got it as a young plant when she had her her first son who's now like 30 or at the time was like 35 or something. She's like, yeah, I got this plant when he was born and um, now they're just too big and I have to downsize because she had so many plants. She had so many. And so I bought two Monsteras from her. There was one specifically that I was interested in, um, but there was also a second one that she was like, kind of like willing to throw in if I bought both of them for a cheaper price. But I said, I don't know, like it, they're both quite large and I don't know if I have the space for it because the original one that I was buying was massive. It was huge and I'll quickly throw in a photo of it. Like the leaves, they they were like the largest monstera leaves I had ever seen and I was floored that she had been growing these indoors. You know, cause this looks like, they were like outdoor sized um, monstera leaves. And so I was just like, I don't know if I have space for this second one. The second one wasn't as big, but still it was like a full plant, you know? And um, she's like, you know, like they'll go good together. You can put them side by side or just put them in the same pot or something. And I literally said, I said, I'm happy to take it. I can buy it from you. I said, but if it doesn't work out, I will probably have to rehome it. That's what I said. And she was like, yeah, you know, just see if it works. Like take both. So it wasn't like this woman who I didn't feel like she was very possessive over it. I don't feel like she was having any remorse about selling it. Like she was really trying to get me to get both. So this was the only time in the many Facebook transactions that I had where she like, like we were literally just gonna leave with the plant, but she's like, I'll make you some tea. Like she wanted us to like sit down and have tea with her. I wasn't gonna like say no to this old woman. You know, I really didn't want tea, but it was like a cool interaction, like an older, you know, plant person. And we were just talking plants and 
she was telling me about her kids and like when she immigrated to Canada and stuff. And yeah, it was a, like we stayed there for probably like half an hour to 40 minutes just chatting. My husband was with me, Vince was with me and yeah, we had tea, had a good conversation and, and then I took the plant home and I left. And um, similar to what happened in this situation, the next day she messages me and she's like, you know, how did the plants get home okay? Because, you know, we had kind of a small car and she knew that it was going to be sort of tough to get it home. And I'm like, oh, it like went off without a hitch, no broken leaves, like everything's all good. I sent her a picture of the Monstera in its new spot and it looks so happy. And she's like, oh, it looks so nice at your house. Like, I'm glad that you love it. And so um, I was thinking about potting the second plant into the same pot, but the plant was so big, it already took up so much square feet of that corner. I was like, it literally doesn't make sense to try and squeeze a second Monstera into it. And it's like, I can enjoy these leaves more when it's just on its own. And I really did try and find a spot for the second one. Like I was Monstera obsessed at this point. I already had like probably like two or three other big Monsteras at the time. Is this crooked or what? I think it's like at an angle. And so, yeah, I was crazy Monstera obsessed. I really wanted to make it work. I just wanted the house to be a jungle. This was like my crazy jungle phase where I was like, I want every square foot to be covered with plants. Um, that phase passed very quickly once they all got thrips, but that's a story for another day. So after about four or five days of having this random other Monstera sitting in the middle of my living room with nowhere to go, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna sell it. I'm just gonna sell it. So. I sold it for a little bit more than what I paid because, you know, I transported it. I actually did repot it. I put it into a new pot. I got it out of the uh, ceramic vase that it was in and I put it in something lighter because I did have an intention to keep it. I just didn't end up keeping it. So I figure like tacking on an extra $15 was worth my pot plus the soil and time and whatever. Tell me why she messages me on Facebook, takes a screenshot of my listing and was like, how dare you? Like, how dare you resell this? Like you took advantage of me. I sold it to you for $15 less and now you're just on marketplace trying to make money off of someone's like hard work. You know, she's like, give me my plants back. Like she wanted both plants back. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not gonna give it back to you. And I was like, I'm a little confused here because I literally told you I had no space for it. And I told you to your face that if I couldn't fit it, I was gonna sell it. And she's like, no, you didn't say that. You didn't tell me like, if I had known you weren't gonna keep it, I would have just kept it and blah, blah, blah. You just want it for money. You're probably gonna sell the other one too. And she basically was just saying that I was like a flipper, you know, when I was like, dude, seriously, 15 extra dollars for a plant I repotted and put into a pot that's actually worth more than $15. Like, please give me a break. And yeah, she was just bombarding me with messages one after another. So you're a scammer, give it back, bring it back to my house at once, or I'm gonna tell my son like what you've done and I'm gonna post you on Facebook Marketplace with your picture and say to not sell to you. And I was like, this lady literally went from being like the sweetest old woman to like a literal witch. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I said my piece, I wasn't mean or anything. I was just like, look, I think that you need to get your emotions sorted here. I didn't do anything wrong. I was very straightforward about what was gonna happen to the second one if I couldn't fit it. I had no intention of selling the first one. Trust me, this thing is, you would have to pry it out of my cold dead hands. And then I said that and then I blocked her. I don't know if she ended up ever like posting me on Facebook Marketplace. I don't know, I just blocked her. I just wanted nothing to do with her. But it just reminded me of that. I was like, holy crap, good thing she's not the one who delivered it. Cause then she'd know where I live cause I feel like she would definitely have like shown up to my house 
because she was that angry but she went from like zero to 100 she was not happy and i wasn't going to return the plant it was such a pain in the butt to get it home it was so big and heavy it was in one of those like 14 inch you know those like uh s glazed ceramic pots that you can get from like asian grocery stores or like if you if you've ever been to like an asian owned um plant shop they like import them from asia they are so heavy my grandma used to have a bunch of them they're just like this really 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 it's like freaking concrete it's so heavy each pot is probably like 50 pounds or something so like Vince, my poor husband, is like dragging these to the car. I'm like, no, I'm not taking it back. You would have to come find me and take this plant out of my house if you want it back. So I just blocked her and that was the end of that. But I was like, that was really weird. That was very strange. Um, anyway, it's repotted. I think it could have been in a bigger pot, but I did chop a little bit off, so that's good. Hopefully this new leaf just comes out okay even after being chopped. I am going to wait to water it though because I did chop it. Um, and then now I just need to get this thing into a pot before it dries out. I just... Uh, everything is blocked. This is like so much pawn and such a big cup for the tiniest little propagation. It seems ridiculous. This seems ridiculous. We need to, no, 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 no. This makes more sense to me, this size. Okay, let's start over. Anyway, oh my gosh, I have made a mess. I have made a giant, giant, giant mess. But I'm done, I'm done. What did you guys think about this? Did you, I mean, you probably didn't like it maybe as much as like the plant MIDA holes, but it's a nice change of, pace and it feels oddly it feels good to know that like everybody kind of has crappy marketplace interactions because sometimes i'm like is it just me like i'll see someone post something really recently and then like it'll sell so fast i'm like why can't i sell things that fast on marketplace like i'm just getting like a bajillion is this available messages um, but yeah, it seems like many people have been in far worse situations than I have. Luckily, that story I told is probably my most, I don't know, weird marketplace interaction. I haven't really had any weirder ones than that. I've had annoying ones, but nothing to the extent of some of the stories that I told today. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me while I repotted. Um, I am gonna do when I'm back from California. I'm gonna do probably a repot and chat Plant update kind of showing you guys what some of them um, Look like after the repot. I haven't done that in a while. I kind of forgot that was a thing on this channel um, They don't get a whole lot of views, but I do think it's worth the update for people who are invested or curious about how some of the repots are doing. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, thank you for watching another Saturday upload. Um, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one.